Hey Elk, Cohen here. So, I haven't made a video in a pretty long time. I'll get into that a little bit. Um, but otherwise, I probably won't do a video about that until the new year, about everything, and why I kind of stopped being as active on social media. But I do still want to help people, and I do respond to people who message me when they find me over my personal account, if I do end up back on the Transfellas account, which I do pop back in every once in a while to just see what's going on. Um, if I notice that there's somebody who messaged me that might really need help, then I do try to respond back. If I don't, it's because I have not seen it, or it's been such a long time since that message was sent that um, I feel like if they still needed help, they would have messaged back a second time. So. If you ever really do need help, I definitely suggest looking for other people within the location that you are, or possibly even just, sometimes if you go on Transfellas, you can find other people that are in your area. I know it's some effort to scroll, but I've done a lot of shout outs for areas all over the world, asking people if they want to connect. So you might be able to find somebody who might be able to help you if you go through Transfellas, which is why I still kept it up and active. Um, I wanted to make sure that everything that was there thus far was still gonna be there if people needed those resources or if they still wanted to connect with each other or even people still tag uh, Transfellas in their posts, which I love because then it still keeps it relevant and it still keeps people going to the page and they're still intermingling with each other. So that's why I never actually just got rid of the page because I didn't wanna, um, I didn't wanna delete, destroy all of the stuff that's been on there for the past like three to four years that has done so well for myself and many other people. So that's why I've kept it up. I'll explain why I wasn't really active in the new year with another video. I do pop back on, I don't really do anything on the account, but I'm just like there to see what's going on type thing. Um, but besides that, this video is about my bottom surgery. So if you've watched any of my videos, which you can definitely go and watch those videos, they're a little bit confusing because originally I was going to San Francisco to have phalloplasty with Dr. Safer. I was going to do alt phalloplasty, I had a date and everything. Technically, by the timeline, I would have already had my surgery if I didn't cancel due to the fact that my mental health is very poor and me traveling to a different country is not... I had to come to the realization it's not doable, so I had to cancel that. One awesome thing that did come out of that is that a buddy of mine that I know was able to get bumped up for surgery, so he has had stage one phalloplasty, and I am super happy for him. Super proud, and uh, I hope that everything continues to go well for him, and if he's watching this video, I think you know who you are. So, um, congrats! Anyways, um, after that, I spent the last year uh, conversing back and forth with Montreal, their gender reassignment surgery clinic, and asking if they would do alt phalloplasty because both of my arms are tattooed. I do not feel comfortable having a tattoo on my penis, and at the end of the day, I prefer not to use my arms as a donor site. I would be much happier with my thighs because it's less visible and I don't have tattoos there. So it's fresh skin. I'd prefer to use that. I spent this last year going through um, doctor's appointments to make sure that um, the criteria that you need to meet to have alt phalloplasty, Montreal is a little bit more strict on that, but most surgeons usually do have some sort of assessment that they will make you do to see if it's okay for you. And that's all I'm going to say on that because I don't know what other surgeons do, especially if you're a larger person, because there's many different forms of phalloplasty that you can get, but it all depends on what the donor site is. And then each one of those has their own assessment for if you're a good candidate. And I don't want to say that anybody restricts anybody or anybody pushes anybody through because I'm not 100% sure about that. But you can definitely look into it if you want to look up other surgeons. Uh, anyways, I went through having doctor's appointments, sending in pictures, um, sending in assessments, and then I was told that like, yeah, they'll do the surgery for me, but I needed to get a vascular scan of my thighs. And I ended up getting an appointment in Hamilton, which I think I said in one of my other videos. 
But that was like three months away and I talked to my HRT doctor and she gave me a referral information for a place in St. Catharines and I ended up going to the St. Catharines Hospital. That ended up taking place within two weeks of even like sending in a referral for it. So that was awesome. But the downside of that was that when I did go to get those, um, the hospital never sent my results anywhere. I went back in the next day and picked up the CD and I asked that my results be sent to my family doctor so that I could pick them up and then mail them to the appropriate place. And I found out that um, that wasn't done. Montreal had been on uh, vacation leave, which their whole office does at that time of year because they work all year round. So that's their vacation time. And I had to wait to call and see if they got any of that information so it was already almost the end of August and I had gone for my scan in July so that was a little bit concerning and then it was up until literally the beginning of November that I was playing email tag because at that point we had gone back and forth me and the uh, Montreal Clinic trying to get a hold of the St. Catharines Hospital and being like you didn't do this report you didn't send it right when they actually did send it and the radiologist ended up saying that they did not know what they were supposed to do and they could not do the report that uh, Dr. Belanger was asking for, which from what I've been told is false because it's a basic scan and it's just a matter of, from what I'm getting, they sent in the information along with what they needed that radiologist to do, which was pretty straightforward, but there was also information about phalloplasty attached to that. So I don't know if maybe that radiologist was all concerned about the fact that there was phalloplasty information and thinking he had to do something different, if it was a matter of somebody being ignorant or what, what have you, but it ended up that Dr. Belanger had to wait until the radiologist that she usually connects with during uh, surgeries and things like that, consults, whatever, and um, they had to go through my, the CD that I sent in and do the assessment on their own, which a radiologist who was paid to do it was already um, supposed to have done. Anyways, that took quite a long time because their schedules didn't mesh well because they were so busy. So it was literally probably three days ago that I got a phone call from Montreal saying that they approved me for all phalloplasty and they were giving me a date for my consult. So I actually have a pre-op slash consult on January 31st at 9 in the morning in Montreal, um, which is awesome. I'm super pumped. I did wish that it was a little bit sooner because if some of you don't know, I'm going to become a dad in December. My wife is due on December 24th and our baby will be coming. So unfortunately, I will have to leave home for a day or two to go for this consult but my sister's gonna come with me, so that's gonna be awesome, and I think my wife's gonna have her mom come stay, so it'll all be good, but I was kinda hoping to have this done before the baby came, and unfortunately that didn't happen. There was a lot of hiccups along the way, um, a lot of just waiting because I wasn't technically a patient of anybody that was trying to, that I needed these informations and assessments from, so, and yes, I know I said informations. Um, anyways, I don't want to make this an uber long video, I'll probably make another one after my consult, but I just wanted to say that I've finally gotten there, and with all the confusion and everything, I definitely will have more things to say, because if you've watched my previous video about what I've been going through in regards to Montreal, I had to go about things very differently. It's not exactly the same way that you would go about it if you were going for um, RFF phalloplasty. Um, all phalloplasty is different because they don't generally do it. They will do it if you request, but they will make you do an assessment. So at the end of the day, there was some confusion. I do know that now I only need two doctor's letters, not four, which was originally something that was sent to me in an email. And I don't know who did that, but that was having me like stressing myself like crazy. Um, I do have two doctors that will be signing, um, assessment letters for me to say that I am ready for surgery and that this is something that I should be doing and my approval hopefully or my request for funding and approval should be sent in by the end of this month. I have an appointment with my HRT doctor on the 27th of November which she will then send out all the um, applications for that 
and then hopefully within a month or so I'll hear from that then I'll have my consult I'll be able to figure out what I have to do electrolysis wise and then roughly get a time frame and hopefully I'll be able to book my surgery for around this time next year I'm gonna say around this time next year because I don't know how long electrolysis will take but if I am able to I am thinking that like the end of the summer would be a pretty decent time and also my baby will still be small enough that they aren't running around like a little tiny crazy person that I have to chase while post-op. So it would be more beneficial if I could get um, the first stage of this surgery done before I have to chase a child or worry about the fact that a child may jump on me. So um, that would be great and that's what I'm hoping for. I will keep everybody posted. Like I said, I'm not as active on trans fellas, but when it comes to certain things, I do want to keep people posted. Um, I did post recently that I am part of a mentoring group. It's called Mogai Mentors, and it's for anyone within the Hamilton area or the surrounding. Uh, I say that because Bimbrook, Ancaster, Flamborough, Stony Creek, and all those other little towns are actually part of Hamilton, in a sense, if you look at the grand map of Hamilton. Bimbrook is actually called the new city of Hamilton and has been for 10 plus years, so I really am advocating for people that are outside of the main area of the city, trying to get them aware of this group that's going on. It's for ages 8 to 15. They will take kids as young as 5. Um, and as well, they will allow up to like age 17, 18. Um, we give, they give a little bit of flexibility on the age bracket because you may not fit into another group immediately or there might not even be a group available because kids are so young. But that's what we're trying to do here. Um, my buddy and his friend, well my buddy started it and he owns it with his friend and it's actually funded and it's a legit, um, it's a legit organization and we're trying to get it up and running if you want any information you should go to mogai mentors or my most one of my most recent posts on the trans fellas instagram account actually has um the drop-in information about mogai mentors so if there's anybody who has a child or is possibly watching this video and in that age bracket i don't think you would be because this is probably going to be age restricted by youtube but um it's literally like big brothers big sisters um we will have drop-in meetings we'll have fun stuff we will have fundraisers and when the kids come in and they start mingling in the group and everything what will happen is that these children will be set up with a mentor, so it'll be a mentor-mentee program, and then also that will uh, move on to take place outside of the group, which happens, uh, it happens once a week, every month, no, yeah, once a week, four times a month, on a Wednesday, so if you need any other information, Mogai Mentors is definitely the page that you should go check out, it's a great program, great opportunity, has a good amount of funding, and the person who started it is an amazing person. And we have a lot of great mentors that are joining us and a board of directors that is great. So if anybody is in need, please contact. If you are above that age group, I do want to give a, a shout out to Spectrum. Spectrum Hamilton is a program for those who are 17 to 29. They help you out with a lot of real life stuff. They do fun activities. They um, teach you life skills, um, other stuff like that. They're very informative as well. Both these places are connected. There are a bunch of other places in Hamilton, but these two happen to be my favorite and ones that I am slightly connected to. I'm not a head honcho of any of them. I'm just somebody who's been able to help out, and I'm grateful for that. So check those out. Check out my other videos about my phalloplasty journey if you feel so, or any of the other videos on this YouTube, and I will try to post another video um, after I've had my consult, and then I will also try to post another video, like I said in the beginning of this video, um, explaining exactly why I stopped being so active on trans fellas. So if anybody's interested in any of that, keep an eye out, or go check out the old content, which still pretty relevant to be honest with you so i will talk to you all later i hope everybody has been doing amazing i hope you are all doing well and that 
with the holiday season coming, everybody has a great holiday season to anybody who has been down or isn't doing so well. I do hope that everything works out for you. I hope that things start to look up. And if you do need to talk, I do respond to comments on here, which you would get a response to quicker than if you were to post on Trans Fellas. So that is one way that you can get a hold of me is if you message me on here. So I will see you all soon. And I wish you all the best of luck. I will talk to you later. Peace.